Wow! Inning, I didn't know you are so good at catching the ball. Of course, I play a lot of sports at school, you know. Anyway, Elder Eric, I think we should start the service already. Yes, good morning, Glad Tidings Church. Good morning, everyone. This is my co-host, Elder Eric, and I am Inning. Thank you for joining us online today at the Intergen Sunday. Now, you don't see our usual chairperson. Today, because we have a special lineup for you as part of our sermon series, Becoming an Intergeneration Church. Yes, and we are sad that we cannot have every child, youth, young adult, adult, and senior represented here with us today. But nonetheless, we encourage you to tune in and participate in today's service with your families at home. Sit together, worship, sing, and dance during worship together, and listen to our guest speakers together. And now to start off today's Intergen service, I would like you to go into the Mentimeter to answer this question. Go to www.menti.com and type in the code 3961 2968. Are you ready for the first question? What do you think are the differences between me and Ening? Give your answers in the Mentimeters now. Wow, oh, let's see, Ening. What are the differences they put? Whoa, I'm taller. <laughs> Definitely I'm taller. Yes, I agree. One is handsome and one is pretty. Oh! Those are very solid, very solid truths. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, we have also the age. There's an age difference in here. But we don't have the numerical value of the age. Let's see, are there any more differences that they could point out? Why is there one with a both same? What is both same? Yeah, I'm wondering, who is the person who said both same? What do you mean both same? Elder Eric, one person said you are a senior citizen. Oh, you could tell. <laughs> Wow, I like that. Oh yes, somebody, somebody said one is a son of God and one is a daughter of God, but both are children of the Lord. Wow, praise God for that. Okay, can I know, can I know someone who put the answer as young at heart? How do you know my heart is young? <laughs> okay, I think we have... A lot, a lot of differences listed here. So now I'm going to ask the second question. And for the second question, right, anybody that can get it correct, Elder Eric here will give you a prize. Right, Elder Eric? What? Yes, Ying? yes, How you will give them a prize. How can you me like that? No, I'm sure you have prepared something. Okay, okay. So the second question is, what is the age difference between Elder Eric and myself? Okay, let's see who gets right. And so who you can deserve the prize? Key in the number difference. Okay, where are the age? Where are the numbers? Oh, we have one thirty-seven years different. Oh, we have thirty-six. You have twenty-three. All right. Two thirties and two forty-one. Pretty close, right, Ening? Quite, quite close, but no one is getting the correct answer yet. But right? the answer is still wrong. There is one that says 18. Wow. Either I'm, I'm young or Ening is old <laughs> by putting it. <laughs> okay. 44, yeah. Both yes. are forever 21. Wow, I like that. Forever 21. 
Still no correct answer yet though. Okay. You think you should give them the correct answer? Yeah, I think we should. Okay, so this is a very tricky question. So that we will question. not hold too long. I couldn't wait to give the prize away. Oh, yeah. Finally, we have 47, 47, 47. Yes, so that is the correct answer. The age difference between Elder Eric and myself is 47 years. Well, those who answer 47, I, ha I can only have one prize for you. So I don't know how you're going to share this prize and be ready to receive this prize, okay? And this is the prize for you. Wow, Elder Eric. I didn't know you knew how to do a Korean heart. Do you guys know? Well, I think we should give Elder Eric a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Don't forget, I also watch the Korean serial. The Ajuma, they love this sign. You know, Ying, just now we ask people to pick up the differences between us, right? And that's usually what we like to do when we meet people who look, act and talk differently from us. But you know what? I want to focus on the similarity now we have. And that one big similar factor is that we belong to Christ. Yes, that is very true. And no matter what the age is, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Yep. So before we start service today, I would like to encourage everyone to send a message to someone in GTC but of a different generation and tell them this. We are one in Christ. God bless you, brother or sister. Yes. Will you do it? Let's do it together. All right, I think I'm going to text Pastor Lydia. What a great idea. Of course Let it's a great idea. Let me see who I have in my phone. Okay, done. Ining, I think it is time. Oh, there, what, what are you doing? Are you warming up or something? I thought we just played with the ball just now. No. What do you think? It's time for praise and worship with our band consisting of different ages. And Samantha is going to lead us in some praise song that require all of you at home to get up on your feet. And yes, you, the older one, like me. Yes, you, the people that are 47 years younger than me. Yep, so stand up and get to your feet including the younger children and the teenagers, and let's worship God together. The live band will be set up on stage with the children leading us in the actions to the worship songs. So, young or old, worship is made for everyone. So, stand up, move along, and sing along with us. Let's welcome the worship band.
Let's all clap and dance to this song together. Thank you, Samantha and, and team, for leading us in such a wonderful time of worship. Elder Eric, do you do the actions to the worship song? Did you see what I do down there? I was following every move. Na 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 na. Wave of mercy, wave of oh oh oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> Wow, Elder Eric, what an icon. I love your spirit to be so enthusiastic when worshipping with the children. And speaking of our children, today we have Brother Elvin Fung who will be sharing with us from God's Word about the value of a child. He is here with his beautiful family, Esther, Naden, and Phoebe. Yes, and did you know that when COVID-19 first hit and all the churches had to close its doors, Brother Elvin and his wife Esther did an online program for children all over Singapore. And many of our GT kids attended and they were so blessed by their ministry. Yes, they are the founders of Treasure Box SG and their aim is to inspire, train and equip parents with the tools they need to lead their families in seeking God together. Elvin and Esther are trained marriage mentors and speakers with focus on the family in Singapore. They believe that every parent's first ministry is to their home and their first disciples are their own kids. Their vision is for a generation of spiritually healthy families to rise up and display Jesus' love to a lost and broken world. Yes, and we are so grateful to have them here with us today. In fact, they have specially prepared a worksheet for our primary school students who are watching and following along. So it should have been mailed to you sometime this week. So parents, if you would please prepare that for your child as well. And now, before I invite uh, Brother Elvin up on stage, I would like to say a prayer for us as we listen and for Brother Elvin as he shares the word. Father God, thank you for getting us here today for the word that Brother Elvin has prepared for us. May you bless him with wisdom and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit as he shares his knowledge. And for listeners, I pray that we will come and listen with open hearts and open minds to receive the knowledge that you would like us to receive. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Let's welcome Brother Elvin. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Glad Tidings Church. Good morning. Oh, it's nice to have some response here. Well, um, uh, before I start, I want to say a big thank you uh, to Pastor Paul, to Pastor Lydia, and the rest of the team for inviting us here. Uh, so I'm here with my wife as well as my two children. Can you wave? Assume that they can see your hands. All right. Um, yeah, and uh, it's, it's such a pleasure to be here, especially for your intergen intergenerational uh, church service. Uh, I really, really enjoyed the banter between Elder Eric and Yining. Uh, I think they were very natural. Were they very natural? Come on, at home, can you give them a big hand, please? Yeah, they did so well. You know, and it's always a, a privilege and a pleasure to be able to come to church and see the generations, not just sitting together, not just worshipping together, but really learning and enjoying the Lord and enjoying each other as well. Uh, I believe that that's uh, God's plan and that's God's purpose for each and every one of us as well as we grow together uh, in His house and in the faith. Amen. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start my sermon uh, so you guys can see my screen. Oh, I was telling JK just now, I was saying, JK, I have very bad experiences with pointers. So let's try that again. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> My fault, I never turned on. Okay, so this is us. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, I, Esther and I have been married for uh, just over 13 years now. <laughs> Did I get it right? <laughs> she was shooting me daggers already. Uh, just over 13 years. Nathan is 10 and <laughs> Phoebe is 8 years old. And uh, yeah, so we, we started this. Uh, ministry called The Treasure Box about slightly over three years ago. So it's nice to know that you guys have been following along with us on social media and on YouTube. And I'm really thankful to hear how you guys have been blessed uh, even by the series of videos with, that we put out last year. Uh, wow, it feels like such a long time ago. Huh? This pandemic stretches time like nobody's business. Okay, uh, so as Ening pointed out earlier, we did send you guys uh, this worksheet. So it's for the primary school, but if you, are, if you have younger kids, you can let them try uh, colouring in also, lah, huh? no problem. So you see that there are some arrows on your worksheet. So those arrows will kind of direct you and help you to kind of follow along as I share my message. Okay, so today I want to kind of start off right by asking you a very simple question, okay, whether you're here or whether you're at home. What makes you mad? Okay, mad not like xiao, but mad like angry. What makes you angry? So in order to hear from you and get your response, I know today we do a, a bit of menti. Eh? Uh, so can you do one more menti for me, please? <laughs> okay, so go to menti.com, 3859-2383. Uh, okay, or you can just scan the QR code. Uh, and in just about five seconds, JK is going to help me to switch over to the menti. And I want to hear from you. What makes you mad? Okay? What makes you angry? Okay? And here are some of the categories that you're going to see on your mentee. Okay? Number one, people interrupting your conversation. Okay? Does that make you angry? How about this? Other cars cutting into your lane. A lot of all you are at home, huh? so today you didn't have to experience that. So perhaps one less source of anger for you. Uh, I had to kind of fly in today from the distant land of Boon Lay. So there were lots of cars cutting into my lane. So maybe I might have gotten a bit upset, just a bit. Uh, how about this? Slow service at a restaurant. Right? You go and get McDonald's, go and get your fast food. But then they say, sir, sorry, I got to give you, give you a number. You have to wait. You're like, wait, I thought this was fast food. How about number four? Internet lag. Oh, oh, oh. Are we all, oh, there we go. Internet lag is a huge source of pain for us, especially gamers uh, like Uncle Elvin. Uh. Am I allowed to say that? Uh, <laughs> the next one is quite, well, jumping quite a lot. Eh. Actually, it might be the most. Realizing you paid too much for an item you could have gotten for cheaper elsewhere. Right? True story. One time my wife bought something. She thought she got a very good deal for it because she ordered from Taobao. Right, then she's like, wow, then come, come, come. Okay, la, I think cheap, cheap. Then plus shipping, plus the air freight, right? Then you're like, wow, very happy with the item. The next day we saw it, $2 at Daiso. Uh, then you're like, Ugh! okay, angry. 
Wow, so so far, people interrupting conversation and the and the Daiso Taobao thing. Oh, internet lag. A bad haircut. Okay, some of us get upset with a bad haircut. Eh? Okay, Pastor Lydia is nodding her head furiously. Furiously. So I know she must have been one of them. Not allowed to eat fast food, only 3%. Hey, why you all don't feel for me? I'm, I, I love fast food. Homework, 14%. Yes. <laughs> I wish you could see that my two children like me. Uh, I'm currently doing my I'm currently doing my masters at uh, SBC as well, Singapore Bible College as well. So I uh, pre- I I would have clicked homework too. Sorry to all my professors. Uh, having to share my toys with my sibling cousin. So I assume all the kids click this one, ah, uh, because this is a family affair, okay. But but I know you love to share, right, Phoebe? <laughs> okay, maybe I should have asked you out loud. Okay, so these are some of the things. I'm sure there's many more that we can list, but let's take a look at the, the screen now. Uh, wow, so most of us get upset when people interrupt our conversation or when there's internet lag. I assume most, both of them are kind of related, right? Because uh, when you're on the net, you're chatting with somebody, you're playing your game, then can I interrupt it by like, oh, angry, uh, realizing you paid too much for an item. Okay, so these are all things that get us upset. Now, uh, JK, if you can help me just switch back to the, to the slides. I want to share with you uh, just a very short video, okay, of some of the things that make me, Uncle Elvin, mad. So, because it is not enough that I get upset and triggered on my own, I want to trigger all of us by letting you watch this video, okay? So, watch along with me, and I hope that it will bring you as much pain as it brought me. Okay, here we go. Now, are you guys still with me? Or you turn off the TV already? Huh? <laughs> so, these are, these are some things that uh, make me really upset. I, in front, Elder Eric was like, oh. <laughs> the kick cutting part, he was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Very visceral, right? In your face. So, I, okay, I just, just a fun little intro, okay? Um, I, I, I think we can all agree that all of us, regardless of our age, regardless of our background, regardless of where we come from, what we do, right? We are all bound to get angry at something at some point in our lives, right? And the reasons why we get angry are very varied, right? There are many different reasons, right? So children, maybe they're angry because it's supposed to be holiday, but my teacher still give me HBL, uh, right? Uh, for adults, it's like, wow, angry because you know what? I was supposed to finish close that deal, but then somebody, one of my colleagues came in and stole it from me. Wow, angry, right? But here's the thing. What I want to suggest to you, all of us, that what we get angry about shows a lot about what's happening inside of us, right? That what we get angry at reveals something of our nature, our character, and our motivations, right? So, if you want to know what is close to a person's heart, what is in their hearts, find out what makes him or her angry, right? So if discrimination is something 
that gets a person really upset, you know that justice lives in that person's heart. If gossip, lying words, right, rouse someone up, you can be sure that honesty is a virtue that he or she treasures. And if poverty stirs a person to passionate debate and to action, we can conclude that this person has a heart for the poor and the needy. So now you all know what makes Uncle Alvin angry. You all know that I'm actually a very shallow, superficial person. <clears throat> okay? Uh, how about this? Children. Okay? Children here, the two children here, and all the kids watching at home. How many of you like animals? Can you show me by your hands? Okay. Who loves cats like Uncle Alvin? Ah, okay. All the dog lovers? Oh. <laughs> Pastor is a dog lover. I cannot say anything bad about dog lovers now. <clears throat> dog lovers are great. Dog lovers are the best. <laughs> I told you, superficial, right? Um, if, how would you feel if someone came along and kicked the cat or kicked the dog? Wow, angry, right? Uh, so if you feel angry like that, if you get upset, then probably we, we have a heart for all living things. We have a heart for maybe for small, cute little animals as well, okay? So, what if what if we were to kind of take this idea that anger shows what's in a person's heart and let's kind of apply it to Jesus. How about Jesus? When were the times that Jesus got angry? Uh, some of you are looking at the screen now like, what? Jesus got angry? Huh? Yes, he did. Go read your Bible. Okay. <laughs> Jesus got upset a couple of times in the Gospels and I suspect that if, if we studied the Bible to find out what got Jesus angry, what got him mad, we would likewise have a sense of what is actually important to him, what is in his heart, okay? So let's do that. And today I want to kind of talk to you about what made Jesus angry as an introduction, okay? What made Jesus angry? There are five instances in the Gospels where Jesus is recorded as being angry, so the word angry was used, or he showed very, very deep emotion, okay? The first one is when he witnessed corruption and cheating happening in the temple courts. Right, so this is from John chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. And we know the story, right? Jesus went to the temple. He saw the people buying, selling, and basically they were being charged exorbitant, ridiculous prices, right? Just so that people can go into the temple and worship. So people were being forced not just to buy the offerings for worship, but they were being forced to pay very high prices. So there was cheating. And Jesus got so upset that he cleared the temple of the moneylenders and the merchants who were taking advantage of the people. In fact, if you read this passage of Scripture, you will find out that Jesus was so angry, he did not just go around, ugh, ugh, no, flip table. But the, the Bible says Jesus went and made a whip. He didn't just find a whip. He didn't just borrow a whip. He made a whip. Can you imagine that? Jesus sitting down at one corner of the market, making a whip slowly, right? Like children like that, right? Children, are you more angry when your parents come and yell at you? Or are you more angry when they are like, very? Are you, are, are you more scared when your mom is like, Nathan, you know, huh? when you get home, okay, then you will know. <laughs> right? So Jesus was in the later than you know. Huh? He was in that mode, right, when he was making the whip. Okay? So Jesus got angry at corruption and cheating. Secondly, Jesus got upset. Jesus got angry at death. Right, and in the story of uh, 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 Mary, Martha, and Lazarus who died, in John chapter 11, verse 33, Jesus felt a deep anger, a deep sense of emotion welling up inside of him when he saw Lazarus dead in the tomb. Right, so much so that he was deeply troubled, he was weeping. Why? Why do you think Jesus would have been angry at death? Simple, because Jesus represents life. Jesus said, I come to bring life and give life more abundantly. And here is death the ultimate enemy of life. No wonder Jesus got angry. Right? How about the next one? Unfruitfulness. Jesus got angry at unfruitfulness. Right? In this story, you read about how Jesus cursed the unfruitful fig tree. So I always like, kind of try, try to find a parallel to that in our modern day and age. It's kind of like, you imagine at the end of a long, hard day of work, okay, Pastor Paul? After a long, hard day, you counsel 20 people already. You have to prepare sermons for the next five months. You're tired, hungry, okay? Then you walk home. You see the coffee shop in the distance. They say, oh, which store is still open? Then you see the lights are still on on the Chai Fan store, right? You know, they have all those like halogen lights, Chai Fan store, right? Then you're like, oh, there's still food left. I can go and buy. And you walk to the Chai Fan store. The lights are on. The auntie is there smiling at you. Xiao Di, you right? Then you're like, oh, no. 
And you get there and you realize the lights are on, but actually there's no food left. Wow! How would you feel? Angry, upset. Why you bluff me, auntie? You should have turned off the lights. Don't give me this kind of false hope. Right? And I suspect Jesus kind of felt the same way that he saw the fig tree in the distance. It looked fruitful. It looked like it had something to offer. But actually when he got there, there were no fruits on the tree. Jesus got upset. Cursed the fig tree. Why? Because of unfruitfulness. Okay? Next one. Jesus got angry when he saw a religious spirit. Right? And in Mark chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, it tells the story of Jesus being in the synagogue, in the temple. Okay? And there was a man there with a deformed hand. And it was on the Sabbath day, right? And Jesus asked, is it right for me? Is it lawful for me to heal this man on the Sabbath? But no one wanted to answer him because they knew no matter how they answered, they would have gotten it wrong, right? And Jesus was so upset that he was deeply saddened, the Bible tells us, by their hard hearts. And Jesus healed the man. And Jesus very often, right, when he got angry, his harshest words were reserved for hypocrites, for the teachers of the law, Right? He pronounced war on them, right? War on you, Pharisees, war on you, Sadducees. And Jesus got angry at all these things. Now, the last thing that Jesus got angry at, it may come as a bit of a surprise. Because so far, we've looked at what made Jesus angry. Corruption and cheating, yes. Injustice, right? Something we should get angry about. Death is something we should get upset about, right? Um, unfruitfulness is something that it makes sense for Jesus to get, uh, to get angry with because he commands us to bear fruit. Right? A religious spirit, yes, because it comes against and it stops what Jesus wants to do. But what is this last thing that got Jesus angry? And it's in Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to 16. So if you have your Bibles with you or you can read it off the screen, maybe as a family at home, you can read it together as well. I'm going to put it on the screen, okay? It says this, it says, One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry. He was angry with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these little children. He goes on to say, I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on their heads, and bless them. You know, I want to point this out to you. Let's go back to the previous verse. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with the parents. No, he wasn't angry with the parents for bringing the kids. Was he angry with the children? Hey, you're making so much noise. Like, can you all please? Shh. Jesus trying to teach here. No, right? He got angry with who? He got angry with his own disciples. Okay, so much so that he said to them on the spot, hey, don't stop them from coming to me. Right? Jesus was so angry that he berated his disciples on the spot. And this last thing is kind of what we want to zoom in on today, that Jesus got angry when people stopped children from coming to him. And you look, as you look at all these five categories on the screen, you may feel like, a bit strange, eh? You know, Jesus, corruption, cheating makes sense, death makes sense. Why would Jesus get so angry? when children were being stopped from coming to him. And that's because, I want to put to you, that Jesus had a heart for children. Jesus enjoyed being with children. So let's find out a bit more about that today, okay? So here are three lessons about children that we can learn from this encounter with Jesus, okay? And the first lesson is simply this. Like I said, Jesus had a heart for children, right? He says, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. Don't stop them. C.S. Lewis once said this. He said, I do not enjoy the society or the company of small children, and I recognize this as a defect in myself. Wow. Right? He says, I don't like being with kids. Okay? I don't like being with kids. And I think this is a problem with me. <laughs> uh, here's a story for you. Before we started the treasure box, before we had kids, I was like C.S. Lewis. I was like, I don't like children. It's like, and, and, and part of it was like, I just don't like them. They're small. They're kind of obnoxious. They run around. They don't care about anybody. Yeah, 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 Phoebe. Exactly like that. Uh, and then what made it worse was one day Auntie Esther, my wife, no, we, did we just get married then? I think we were, we were freshly married. Freshly married. She was like, and she was serving in children's ministry. 
So one day, she decided that she would sign me up to be a volunteer at a children's camp. Because she said, I want to help you to learn to love children. <laughs> Bad idea. So I went to kids' camp. I was very upset most of the time. But okay, after a while, you grew to like some of the kids. Some are very cute, very obedient, right? But there was this one kid. This one kid. You know, at, the, at every kids' camp, there's always this one kid who like, loves to like, just push people, la, knock things over, la, shout the opposite answer. La. Right, right. So, do you love Jesus, children? Everybody's like, yes. And he's like, no. So one day, I got really, really upset with this kid. And I'm not, I'm not saying you should do this, okay? Please don't try this at home. Do not do this, okay? Disclaimer, underlying bold, italicized, okay? Do not do this. I, one day, this kid was so, he was so obnoxious. I just grabbed him by the shirt. I'm like, hey, stop that. And this kid was like, he refused to look at me. He, I'm like grabbing him and he's still like, eyes. I'm like, fix your eyes on me, look at me. I'm like, if I hear you say one more time that you don't like Jesus, I'm calling your parents. And then from then on, right, for the rest of the camp, every time he saw me walking towards him, he would turn and he would walk the other way. <laughs> so I, I, I understand C.S. Lewis, right? Fully understand him, okay? I do not enjoy the society. But of course, that, all that has changed. I like kids now. I like my own kids. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble, Phoebe. All right? So here's the thing. Jesus is not like C.S. Lewis. Jesus is not like me. Jesus welcomed children, okay? He wasn't afraid that they would make too much noise during his sermon. He wasn't perturbed that they may cry, in the middle when we are singing a hymn. No, right? But you know what? Out of the three instances in Scripture that Jesus raised people from the dead, do you know that two of them were actually children? So there is something special in God's heart for children. Matthew chapter 18, verse 6 gives us yet another glimpse into the heart of Jesus for kids. It says this, If you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone hung around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Wow. You suddenly we are like, this one, Jesus, or this one, Mafia, Messiah. Right? So scary, right? Can you imagine you try saying it in the Italian accent? <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. Um, those of you who are old enough, like Elder Eric, will we'll know this. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I have a question for us. Uh, Glad Tidings Church. Are we like the disciples? Are we stopping our children from getting to Jesus today? Are we inadvertently causing them to fall into sin by our own behaviors, by our own attitudes, and by our own unbelief? Right? Are we making other things more important than God to them? Hey, I tell you, your exams are coming. Church will always be there. We can watch the live stream later on. Ooh. Sunny, very quiet. Because you're not here, ma. I cannot hear you, ma. Ah. Right? Or how about this? We, we, sometimes we minimize their spiritual experiences. We minimize their God encounters. Can you please? I know you just learned in Sunday school that when we can pray for the sick, God hears our prayer and you know, God heals. But can you please stop stopping and praying for every single sick person that you see on the street? You know, it's very embarrassing. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, are we stopping our children from getting to God? You know what? Recently, we've been working on a book, Esther and I. It's called Project Amen. Okay? It's, or rather, it's called In Jesus' Name, Amen. And some of you may have participated in it. It's a book we are collecting testimonies and stories from young children aged 3 to 12 about how God has answered their prayers. And you know what? The stories that we receive have been so encouraging to us. I remember, I love this one. Uh, this is a little four-year-old girl who wrote in. She drew a picture of her car. I mean, we only know it's a car because she told us it's a car, but it's a beautiful picture. And her caption was simply this, I thank God for my car. If not, the rain will collapse us. And it's simple things like that that children are thankful for. But as adults, sometimes we try to bring our own wisdom to bear. We bring our own experience. It's like, this is not a real testimony. Testimony must be like, you know, you, you're someone you know got cancer. We prayed that cancer suddenly disappeared. The doctor said, it's a miracle. Then you... But you know what? Children come to Jesus just as they are. And children have amazing God encounters. We need to stop stopping them from coming to Jesus. Amen? 
All the children say? Ah, very good. Adults also children. You are right. Okay. So the first one, Jesus had a heart for children. Next. I want to do another menti, but this one I want to restrict to children. Only children can do. Okay. Parents, you can help me set up the menti. Pass your phone to your children. Children, yes, I give you approved screen time from Uncle Alvin. Okay. For the next 30 seconds only. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. If you had only $2 for recess, what would you spend it on? Ah, you have $2 for recess. What would you spend it on? And you can only choose two things. Okay, you can only choose two things. Okay, come, let's see. Hey, parents, let your children use the phone for a while. Now. Okay, one. Okay, one. Supervise, supervise. Uncle Alvin, supervise. Okay, I think it's on the screen. Oh, it's not refreshed? Okay, let's try reloading the menti if we can. Thanks, bro. Okay, but you think about it, okay? You've seen the categories on the screen already, okay? What would you spend it on? Okay, soft drinks, snacks, fried rice, noodles. How about this? A new eraser, a bookmark, a ruler of fruits. Okay, I think menti is working very hard. See the circle spinning, huh? Okay, how about this? If you can't do it on the screen, it's okay. All right? At home where you are, children, tell your parents, if you had $2, what would you spend it on? Okay? I'll give you about 10 seconds to tell your parents. What would you spend it? Nathan, what would you spend your $2 on? Don't worry, mama, you won't scold you. Just tell me. Tell me. Huh? <laughs> ice Milo. Okay, Phoebe says she will spend $2 on ice Milo. Ice cream, $2. Nathan says, all $2 on ice cream, really? <laughs> 50 cents is the cheapest ice cream okay 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 not bad not bad this one got some sense of uh, finances right okay so at home I assume you've had your little conversations uh. let's go back to the slide let's go back to the slide okay now so you so my daughter said ice Milo right that reminds me of a story <laughs> I, tell like, I feel like Moses Lim all of a sudden Moses Lim Tanatek okay I remember Nathan's first day of school primary school okay he was so excited. We were all so excited. We brought him to school. You know, this was before COVID. Lah, huh? And we could, like, so the parents will naturally gather at the canteen during recess time because that's when we want to see our children, wave to them. Hopefully, they still recognize us, right? They go there, they see what they buy. Oh, so cute. Oh, you want to buy chicken rice? You bought chicken rice on your own. Ayo. I'm like, me and Esther were standing there at the paga there. Where's Nathan? I cannot see him. Where's Nathan? Then suddenly, we see this kid running towards us, running. Like, oh, it's Nathan. And he's running and running. I'm like, what is he holding in his hand? He's running and I'm like, that is not a plate of rice. Running, running. That is not a plate of noodles. He's holding a big cup of ice Milo dinosaur. Dinosaur, that means with the extra Milo powder on top one. He'll run it. Oh, look at what I got. Mommy. I got it. I'm like, how much do you pay for this? $2. <laughs> Pay two dollars for Milo dinosaur. Okay, I hope you don't get hungry in the middle of the day, right? So ch children, children are like, if I have money, I'll spend it on something I want, lah, right? Milo dinosaur. Maybe someday go to the stationery shop, use all the money they have, buy eraser. Our time, our time, we play eraser, right? We buy the uh, pay, play the what's it called? Ah, uh, the flag, flag eraser, right? Or they go and buy a bookmark, whatever it is. You know, here's the thing. Most days, right? We wouldn't even trust our kids with $2 pocket money. Right? Give you $2 and make sure you spend on food. Ah. Don't buy anything else. Ah. Ah. Here's a question. Would you, having bought a brand new car, maybe a brand new Lamborghini, I don't know, just thinking of any car names, would you hand the keys, to your car, uh, hand the keys of your car to your children and say, nah, this car is for you? Would you do that? I'm guessing not, right? We don't even trust them with $2. Why would we trust them with a car? But you know what? Jesus makes a very bold and audacious statement. He says the kingdom of God, the most precious thing we could ever possess, belongs to those who are like little children. It's kind of like Jesus saying, you know what? Here are the keys to the kingdom of God. Kids, here you go. You can have it. 
<laughs> you know what to do with it, not? Don't know, but yay. <laughs> right? Why? The question is why? Why would Jesus entrust children with his kingdom? Children have no life experience. Children have no killer strategies. Children have no social media presence, or some of them do. Children have no business acumen. Don't know how to make good business decisions, right? Children, some even haven't started learning how to read yet. And some of your children are still in diapers. Why would Jesus entrust the kingdom of God to little children? Why? Because he saw the true value of a child. And I want to kind of drop this idea in your head today that Jesus doesn't look at future potential. Jesus, when he sees a person, he sees eternal value. And some of us, um, we, we kind of like, we get, we get hoodwinked by uh, Whitney Houston, right? What is she saying? I believe the children are our future, right? Teach them well, let them lead the way. She said, children are our future, so we must look after them. And sometimes we, we kind of get it into our heads that the only reason why we should help children grow, take care of them, is because maybe one day, they will be the next Prime Minister of Singapore. Have you, anybody ever said that before? Okay, don't raise your hands. How about this? This time, we must train him up. Next time, he will be the next Billy Graham. And we are always looking ahead to future because they have future potential. Therefore, okay, like, we must prepare them for that. But Jesus didn't say that. Jesus didn't, didn't say one day this person would be raised up to be a great disciple or, or great follower of mine. Jesus simply welcomed them because he saw their eternal value, not their future potential. He goes on to say this, Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven, their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. Right? That's how much Jesus valued children. You know what? We always look at what children lack, what they are short of. Right? They are short of experience, they are short of qualifications, they are short of attention most of the time. Right? They are short of all this. But rather than look at what children lack, Jesus sees what they possess. Jesus sees what they have. And what they have is simple, childlike faith. And faith, unlike, uh, unlike in, on earth, right? faith is the currency of heaven. When we get to heaven, what counts is faith. What counts is not how much money you have in the bank, how many qualifications you have, how many cars you've driven, but faith. Why? Because faith moves mountains, unlocks miracles, and most importantly, faith pleases God. Right? Faith pleases God. So before we are quick to dismiss children, look at children and say, oh, you're not ready, oh, you're not educated enough, finish PSLE first, oh, or you're not skilled enough, right? we would do well to remember that Jesus himself placed immense value on kids that he gave them nothing less than his kingdom. I love this prophecy in the Bible, Isaiah 11 verse 6. It says, In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together, the leopard will lie down with the baby goat, the calf and the yearling will be saved with the lion, and a little child will lead them all. Beautiful picture, beautiful imagery of the immense value that Jesus places on a child. Last lesson we're going to learn today, but definitely not the least. And I want all of us to listen now because it's not this sermon you say, well, Alvin, say children, so go, okay, la, okay, la. But you know what? We all have a chance to be like little children. Right? I love what you guys said in the menti earlier. You say, Elder, Elder Eric and Ening, what's the similarity between the two of them? Right? One is a son of daughter, one is a son of God, one is a daughter of God, but both are children of God. And you know what? No matter how old or how young you may be in this room or even at home, all of us are children of God. So how should we behave? How should we respond to the Lord in that way? Jesus exhorts us to be like little children. He says in verse 15 of our passage, he says, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. When Jesus was asked, right, the disciples are very funny people. They spend all their time around the greatest person in history, right? Who goes around healing the sick, doing miracles, right? Raising the dead. And they're still there to argue, who is going to be the greatest? Are you or me? Eh? Uh, so I don't understand the disciples, although sometimes we behave like them, right? So they were arguing. They asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus is very clear. He doesn't give them a half answer. He doesn't give them some riddle. He just says this. He says, unless 
you become as humble as little children unless you take the hard posture of a little child, forget about being the greatest. In fact, you forget about even getting in through the gates of God's kingdom, right? Whoever takes the humble, lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. And here's the thing. So at the end of it, when we come back and think about it, right? We, we think about children. So parents, think about your kids. If you're not married or you're, you don't have kids, think about the children in your vicinity, like your nieces, your nephews, or maybe some of the GT kids, right, who you encounter uh, undoubtedly. What, what do you think is the reason that Jesus enjoyed being with kids so much? Why did Jesus enjoy the company of little children? that he would say, let them come to me. Maybe it's the purity that they have in their hearts. Maybe it's their genuine faith, like we talk about. Or maybe it's just their pure ability, their unadulterated ability to enjoy both creation as well as the Creator. Okay? And Jesus enjoyed being with little children. So when Jesus exhorts us to be like little children, it's not about behaving like little children. Eh? So it doesn't mean that we will start throwing temper tantrums. Eh? I want, I want. <laughs> ah, children. children also don't do that, eh? please. No good. Uncle Alvin say cannot, okay? Um, <laughs> and of course, children, if you're here, they'll say, wow, this is such a great sermon. Daddy, mommy, Uncle Alvin say you must behave like me. So I'm the boss now. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Huh? This is also disclaimer, bold, italicized, underlined. <laughs> what, what, what Jesus is talking about and how we can all learn from little children is about that humility of heart. It's about that simple faith to receive and accept and believe God's plans and God's promises for each and every one of us. Amen? So maybe that's what Jesus meant when he said that we need to be like little children to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I'll leave you with a few thoughts. Heaven doesn't have space for the person that you and I pretend to be. Heaven doesn't have space for the person that comes in with all their qualifications, with all their life experiences. No, heaven only has space for the person that Jesus died to save. And that is that little child in you and I. And that's what God is calling us to. That is what Jesus is exhorting us to do. So Jesus loves the little children. Right? We sing that song all the time. All the children of the world. Jesus saw the true value of the child. And Jesus exhorts you and I to be like little children. And as I close, let's read this verse. Matthew 19 verse 14. It says this, Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as this. Let the little children. And I believe that when Jesus says, says, let the little children come to me, he's not just referring to physical, biological little children like those who are watching now, all your six years old, nine years old, 12 year old. But he's referring to all of us. We need to come to Jesus. We need to approach him with the heart posture of a little child. And that's an open invitation to every single one of us here in Glad Tidings Church. Whether you're a senior, senior citizen, whether you're a young adult, a youth, a child, it doesn't matter. Jesus welcomes all. He opens his invitation to all. He says, come to me like a little child. And I close with this. Uh, this is a quote taken from an article I read not long ago, and I think it perfectly encapsulates what I've been talking about today. This person writes, Followers of Jesus, you and I, we are all little ones. Childhood is not something you grow out of, but something you grow into. There will be no grown-ups in heaven, might be the best translation of Jesus' words in Matthew 19 verse 14. But even more than showcasing a child, and not some adult scholar or soldier or priest or businessman as his model disciple, Jesus made a child the primary metaphor for following Him and for holiness. Why? Because the greatest gift of Jesus was the right to become the children of God. And friends, family, young ones, old ones, in-between ones, that is the gift that God has given to you and God has given to me. That we do not need to approach Jesus only after we have achieved a certain level of status 
or after we have achieved a certain amount of life experience or achieved some form of qualification or other, but we can approach Him boldly, confidently, knowing that He receives us, right? When we approach Him like little children of God. So would you join me today, families at home? Would you just close your eyes together? Would you hold hands together if you can and here as well? And if not, wherever you're watching from, I, I want us to kind of just close our eyes, bow our heads, and think about this for a little while as I pray for you. God's greatest gift to us from Jesus is the right to be called sons and daughters, children of God. Father, we thank you today that when we approach you, we do not approach you as some distant, far away God who shows up in our life once in a while. But God, we can come close to you. And our spirits cry out to you and call you Abba, Father. And that is the relationship that you want us to have with you. So Lord, today, whether we be nine years old or 90 years old, listening to this sermon, God, I pray that God, our takeaway will be simply this, that God loves children. And because we are all children of God, we can approach Him directly and you will not push us away. So Lord, would you speak to each and every one of our hearts today? Help us to see, firstly, children, the way that you see them. Not as a nuisance, not as a liability to our lives or to our ministry or to our church or to our community, but God, simply as people that you value so, so much, God. And Lord, would you also cause us to re-examine our, our own lives and our own hearts. God, have we been trying to build up our portfolio before approaching you? Or have we been simply running to you just like that little child did? God, would you forgive us for the times when we have tried to present someone else other than our true self to you? But God, we thank you we thank you, Jesus, that you receive us and you accept us just as we are. So, Lord, would you help us today and for the rest of this week, that, Lord, even as we go through our day, go through our work, go through HBL, whatever it is, that, Lord, in everything that we do, may we never forget we are children of God and we have access to you anytime and anywhere. So, God, we thank you. We pray blessing over every member, every leader, every pastor, every boy, every girl in Glad Tidings Church. God, may they realize and recognize the value that they have in your family and in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very much for having me again. I'll hand this time back to Elder Eric. Wow, thank you, Brother Elvin. Elder Eric, I think that was such a great sermon. One of my biggest takeaway was the fact that um, Elder Brother Elvin brought up the point about Jesus doesn't look at the future potential of children, but the eternal value. And I think that's so encouraging because it means that at every point in our lives, we are valuable to God. It could be 10 years ago, tomorrow, today, tomorrow... Uh, Yesterday, today, tomorrow, 10 years from now, we are still going to be a child of God and we're still going to be very, very valued by God. So I think that's really something that encouraged me. How about you? Wow. Before I go into the takeaway value, I got something very angry with uh, Brother Elvin. <laughs> you want to hear uh, what I'm sure, angry about? Sure. Because he didn't put the category of what I like. What angry when I don't get, I didn't get what I want. That is my favorite durian. <laughs> All right, on a serious note, the takeaway for me is that we are to come before God just as a little children, faith of a little children. And this is something that uh, I take, my takeaway is that faith that can move mountain, faith that can lead to miracles, and faith to love God in a closer intimacy relationship. That's my takeaway today. 
All right. So now that we have heard so much about the value of children, let's hear from Pastor Lydia and what has been happening in our GG Kids. Yes, Pastor Lydia. Thank you, Elder Eric and Ening, and thank you, Alvin, for that sharing. Um, so hi everyone, we learned today from God's Word about the eternal value of children and how Jesus values and have a heart for them uh, and how we all should bring children to Him. So this is why our teachers every week for, you know, in the GT Kids, um, they have been meeting with our children online weekly still, even in the midst of COVID. And we have an amazing head of children ministry, Rebecca, and our teachers who, you know, they, week in, week out, they plan their lessons and spend time uh, and dedicate themselves to teach God's word to the children and also try to make the lesson fun and enjoyable for each child. Now, our children enjoy these lessons greatly uh, and every time we see that they come and even last week, uh, last Sunday, we had our Children's Day celebration. Uh, they were organized by some of our youths and we had nine newcomers join in uh, on Zoom. So they had fun, you know, and they heard the message of Jesus Christ and they responded. So um, this was really, uh, really encouraging to our hearts. And as a church, I really encourage all of us to bring the children from 3 to 12. If you know anybody, you know, relatives or friends or neighbours, please do invite them to join us on uh, GT Kids, you know, on Zoom. Uh, we have for preschools all the way to P6. So you may do so by just contacting Rebecca or myself directly or by calling or emailing the church office. Yeah, so as a church, right, uh, let's do that, bring our children to Jesus. And you know some of you, I also want to update that some of you, you may realize that we now refer to our Sunday school or children ministry as GT Kids. Yeah, so the new name is accompanied uh, by, with a new logo and new values. So this uh, rebranding effort, right, serves two main purposes. Yeah, um, firstly, it, strength, it strengthens the identity of an already well-established children's ministry uh, in Glad Tidings, right, by including the letters GT. We didn't used to, we just call it Sunday School. So Glad Tidings is incorporated into the name GT Kids. It's simple and short, which aids in our communications. And uh, Rebecca designed this lovely logo. Okay, so you can see the G and the T inside. Okay, also represents the cross, lah, right? Uh, so it gives it a fun and fresh look so that, you know, future generations and new generations of children that will join us would uh, be, you know, feel like they want to identify, relate to our church better um, and find belonging in this community. Okay, and so this is also our mission. You know, it exists to develop faith in children through discovery of who God is such that they will delight in his word and prayer and demonstrate the gospel of Jesus to those around them. Okay, so uh, that's what we would like to do. The, the second reason why we have this rebranding effort is to align the children's ministry with the vision and direction of GTC's Build Me a New House. Yeah, so these four Ds that you see here are the four values that we aim to nurture and grow in every child. So in these four values, you will see us focus on the great commandment, loving God, loving others. You also see the great commission, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You also see the emphasis on intentional relationships between parents and children, you know, within the family, between church and family, between teacher and child. Yeah, and also between parents and children. So we hope that you will continue to keep the families in glad tidings, children, teachers, right? Uh, all of us in GT Kids in your prayers as we disciple and develop faith in the next generation of children. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Lydia. We want to commend you and uh, the GT Kids teachers and Rebecca for all the works you are done each week. Alright, so last week, Pastor Lydia also shared in her sermon about crosstalk, and if you have missed it, here is a replay of the video. 
I'm gonna ask our first crosstalk question. Okay, mm. the question is recount a time where you experienced God. I actually had a dream. I dreamed that we were all in the sanctuary, mm. worshipping, singing, uh, the band was playing. Um, but suddenly I felt that you know, the song get louder and louder and louder. Mm. And then I felt myself lighter and lighter. Mm. And uh, I was like floating. Yeah. And after that, fierce singing. Mm. I was very fearful. So I, I, I think I dropped and then I just woke up. Wow. Mm. So I think that was the closest I can remember. Mm. Mm. Were you curious to find out what was like? Why, why did you dream of that? I was going uh. to ask the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think like God was trying to tell her something. Like she was like that. And then the fear was like, no. Uh -huh. And then she just like back, yeah. back out. Yeah. It was uh, in the time when I was I was doing uh, teaching mm. in the flight. Uh, I was teaching mm. a student. Mm. So what happened is this that we were doing a landing pattern, you know, for the student. And usually, usually when we do the pattern, we don't normally look up vertically. It's got a canopy, uh, aeroplane canopy. Okay. So something that I look up. The more I look up, I saw this wheel coming towards me. I Bun the aircraft and push the aircraft down mm. just to avoid him landing on my aeroplane. Oh, so I believe, so I believe, I believe the one that asked me to look up is the Holy Spirit. Mm. Which we never, never, we hardly look yeah. up. Mm. So last year when uh, the pandemic hit, the COVID hit, uh, mm. I started volunteering at uh, this NGO, uh, mm. non profit organization that is for the benefit of the, our migrant workers mm. in Singapore. So uh, last year it was during Christmas, um, they, they had this bus tour mm. and then um, which was just to bring them out to go to see the, the, the Christmas lights mm. and orchard and all that. And then in the bus they had some mic and then the speaker so I just mm. thought like maybe it would be interesting to host a, mm. a short karaoke session on, a, mm. on their way back to their dorms. <laughs> and then one guy immediately like raised his hand. And then like, oh so eager, then he quickly uh, scurried in front to like, uh, then I just, okay, I just passed him my phone, then he just uh, searched a song. That's when I looked down on, on, my, on, the, on, on YouTube, then I saw it was a uh, Christian worship song. Ooh. But I don't know, I don't know, I, yeah, I cannot remember, it's, I think it's in demo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then I was, I, I immediately felt like, oh my, it's like Christmas, you know, this is my Christmas event. Mm -hmm. And then like, yeah, he, 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 chose to, yeah, he chose to sing a Christian song. And then I really, really felt the Holy Spirit was in the bus, and wow. I, I was very overwhelmed like, in my thing. So I was like, oh my gosh, you cannot cry. In a wrong place, so I was really trying so hard, so uh, hard to fight back my tears. You suck back the tears. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was the other time my father told me that an angel was like holding on to me. Because I went, I like, we went to the toilet, then there was one, there was one big puddle, and then I was like, just like, Turning like in like random circles, mm -hmm. and then I was about to fall, and after that my body like bounced back up. <laughs> so my father's like maybe an angel is like pushing you not to fall, not to fall. Mm -hmm. wow. And after that my father hurry up grab me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Mm -hmm. They will lift up, lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So Alice and Grace did, what did y'all learn about each other after the cross talk? Uh, okay, I I saw a Grace Lynn in a video before, but I, I you know haven't met her in person, so uh, I was glad that you know today mm. I met I met her and get to know her. Mm. She is working uh, a volunteering uh, at the Migrant Worker Association. Mm. That's something I found out, and also the work that she shared with me about the work she she's doing mm. uh, about. She shared that uh, during her trip, she was uh, uh, the Holy Spirit prompted her to pray for one migrant worker. So I think that that is that's great. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I I think I always knew her, you know, see her around in church, oh. and um, that I think she also uh, is in the usher in the school's ministry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I never I never really got a chance to go out and talk to her. So I'm really glad for this cross talk that we can like, get to know each other mm. more more in depth mm. and uh, know, knowing that. Uh, what God is doing in her life and how she really has I see I really see the spirit uh, the, the Holy Spirit manifesting within her and it's just really very heartwarming to know that yeah yeah that we have a member like this in our church. Mm. Yeah. Okay Elder Eric and Menton from the cross talk what do y'all learn about each other? Well 
I find something unique in Nathan. One thing is that he loves to drink tea for the first time. And secondly, he has a unique mind of his own that can express so well of himself. Mm -hmm. I learned that even though Elder Eric is older, he still has the energy to continue God's work. And not only is he a pilot, he also can teach. So I feel like that's one of a very powerful skill that Elder Eric has. <laughs> Hi Galactidians, as we move toward becoming an intergenerational church, we all need to play our part to nurture faith across generations. And to do that, we need a platform, opportunities to forge intentional relationships. As you have heard today, coming to the table symbolizes a new family of God. Jesus met different people across the table, broke barriers amongst them, and encountered them with his teaching and love. So today, I am inviting you to join Crosstalk. So what is Crosstalk? Crosstalk is about fostering meaningful conversations across generations around the table. So it is called Crosstalk firstly because it is about talking to each other across the table over a meal. And secondly, the hope of Crosstalk is so that we can have conversations that center around Jesus in our lives. So how do you cross talk? To get you started, you can use the stack of conversation starters that we have printed for you. Now each person will get 10 different cards for you to help you to get to know somebody else about their life and faith journey over a meal. Now, if you are unable to be on site to get these physical cards, do not worry we will get a PDF version to you through the GTC Mobile Blast. So we will be doing crosstalk at Glad Tidings by inviting you to be a guest or a host at a meal. Now, at the moment, we have two hosts that are willing to invite five different guests at their home for a meal. So a planning team will also make sure that there'll be multiple age groups present at each meal. That means you can bring your child along for the meal because no matter what age you are, uh, you are welcome at the table. Now, I would really encourage you to sign up for this learning experience and the chance to build each other up. Now, we also like to extend an invite to those who have the gift of hospitality and would like to be a host. Thank you and see you at Crosstalk. If you are interested to be part of this intergenerational initiative, you can register on the link that has been sent to you last week through the GTC Mobile Blast. We will only start crosstalk when the COVID situation improves and do so according to government regulations. Yes, the next coming event for Glad Tidings Church is the Glad Tidings Church Annual Conference 2021, which is going to take place on the 31st October 11.30 on Zoom. Now, GTEC is an annual platform where we will present our financial and briefly share some plans moving forward for 2022. So GTEC is strictly open to baptized members of GTC. So sign up the link that has been sent to you via GTC Mobile. Uh, closing date for the registration is on the 23rd October. You will receive an email regarding your registration by 29th this month. Yes, and now we move on to a time of offering. We have been encouraging our young ones to set aside an amount of money that they would like to bless the Lord with, but not because God needs it, but because it is an, is a way for them to use their money as an, expression and, as an expression to thank God for all that they have and all that God has given them. In the same way, for the families tuning in, you can consider your offering together as a family and give through the QR code. Thank you, everyone, for giving unto the Lord. We will now invite Senior Pastor to close the service. I hope you 
have found that today's service is uh, quite different from what we normally do. As we take our exploratory steps into becoming an intergenerational church, one of the things that I hope that uh, we are able to become is to be able to look at things from different perspectives of the different generations. And today, as we look at it, uh, more from the younger generation's view, particularly the children's way of looking, I'm so encouraged. It's such a refreshing thing to look at uh, the scriptures from a different angle. So I want to thank the speaker, uh, Brother Alvin Fung, for bringing the word in such a refreshing way. Let's close in prayer. Father, we are so thankful for your people, for how they have been faithful in these times of the pandemic. And despite the fact that we are not able to gather together, we know that in spirit we are one and that we can progress into the future knowing that you are with us and that together we are going to make a difference. So we thank you, we praise you, bless each one of us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless all of you.